Hello everyone, it is Thang and welcome to my video. As you see, all my plants are inside. Uh, they've been inside for actually a little bit close to a month now. So in this video, I'm just going to go through, you know, my setup and how I do things during the winter. Not actually the full tour because that's going to take way, way, way too long. I have a lot of plants, like one, two, three, four. And then I also have like Centivarius and then a lot more other stuff on the seat. Like, just just a lot of plants. We'll, we'll do that in another video. But yeah, so I'm gonna go through all the stuff that I do during the winter time. Um, so this would be my sixth year with the succulents, uh, fourth year with this type of setup itself. Um, so those of you who are new, you kind of remember the setup, right? Um, and I've learned quite a lot. This year I've done something a little bit different um, and I'm gonna show you that and I actually really, really like it. So I guess that's, uh, that's I, should we start? We should start. We should start. Wow. So this is my setup right here. Um, it's been four years since I've had this type of setup and it's been working out quite well. Every single year I've tweaked it just a little bit and this year I believe it is the most optimized uh, setup I have. So those of you who are new, here you are. Those of you who have been with me for quite a while, welcome back. Um, so I want to show you the thing that I did first. The first thing that I did this year was that instead of having my shelving unit up against the wall, I've actually moved it a little bit more than a foot. Oh, that, that is like way more than a foot, but like a foot from down there. Um, but a foot from the wall out because my mom this year wanted some space so that way she can go and grab her orchids, work on them and put them back because if the shelving unit is against the wall, she wouldn't have space to do that. She would struggle and that would be not good because then she'll be like bitching at me and be like, God damn it, you got too many plants. Go get rid of those plants. I'm like, no woman, this is my place. Get rid of your orchids. She's like, no. Well, anyways, it'll go on from that. But yeah, so I'm really super happy about that because it allows me to put all my tall plants down there. My fan aloe, my tree aloes, my tall sensivarias, my tall mondadeniums right there. All the tall plants are right here. Plus it also allows me to put some of my hanging pots on this side as well. You got some hoya sedums. Look at this. More hoyas here as well. Just love it. We'll go through that in another video, but let's do this here. That's what you guys are here for, right? Okay. So whatever I say in this video, take it with a grain of salt, of course, right? Everybody's salty these days. Don't be more salty uh, because then you're probably going to drain all the water out of your brain, which is not good. Um, hmm, I've been watching too much YouTube videos. Okay, so whatever I say, um, you can most likely find them at your local store, har hardware store or plant store or horticulture store. You know, if there's a mom and pop store or... Uh, a small business that you can support, definitely support them during this time if you can. If you can't, then definitely bow to your corporate overlords at Home Depot or your definitely future master overlord at Amazon. Uh, you can find them on there. Um, and also, you don't have to specifically find the exact same thing. You can find something that's similar that would fit your need. All right. Okay, so the shelving units I've had for about four years now. These are the HDX shelving units. They are four foot long. I found them at Home Depot because that's where all they carried. Um, and I bought two of them to make this huge, huge, gigantic shelving unit itself. And usually during the summer, I would uh, disassemble it and reassemble it in the balcony. But they're here now because, you know, we need space. Um, you can find them at Costco as well, but the Costco one has... Uh, wheels on them so that's up to you you know buy them at Home Depot without the wheels buy them at Costco without the wheels right um, on the bottom here I have the shelving unit on top of carpets because we want to catch all the water if there's any water spillage from watering you know we never want the water to touch the floor because if that happens it would damage the floor and we'd have to repair it and that's very costly um, on, a, on the bottom layer um sorry below the carpet is actually plastic sheets these are polyethylene six mil plastic sheets and i have two of them just in case you know if the water does seep through like a lot of water seeps through then you it will spill over to the side here 
and we'll just mop it up. I know moisture is going to be there if there's a lot of water, but there tends to be not that much water falling through. It's just like driblets, you know, and it's perfectly fine. So that's how we protect the floor. Um, for the lighting system, I have three different lighting systems. You see right here. All of them are full spectrum LEDs. Yes, I've been using the Sun Blasters for about four years now. I have the Sun Blasters, the Mars Hydro LEDs, and also the Bar Barinas, uh, Bar Barinas LEDs as well. So let's go through the Mars Hydro itself. The Mars Hydro was sent to me last year, which is nice because it adds a new addition to the top layer here. Um, it actually creates a lot of heat. So this, this thing gets really, really hot and it gen generates the heat for all the cacti, uh, euphorbias, mondadeniums, echeverias that loves the heat, right? It just loves the heat, but it doesn't, it's not too hot to burn out the crassulas, which I have here as well, right? So usually the temperature when it's closer up to here, it's about like 35, 36 degrees. But when it's down here at the main floor, it's about 28 degrees Celsius. So absolutely perfect for the top layer, but it's also really big. That's why I leave it on top. <laughs> um, I also have the sun blasters on the side because unfortunately that doesn't cover everything. I need to compensate more for the more for the edge as well so the sun blasters are the four foot long ones full spectrum leds they don't get hot like you can literally just like put your hand there they do get warm but they don't get hot enough for you to like go oh my god that burns you know what i mean mm. oh, it burns it burns like that hook of my head last night um but yeah they're really great um they are super powerful as well but they are super expensive in Canada, it costs about $150, including tax, for one strip of it. Right, so it's a bit pricey. Um, so I have it on this layer as well. And the bottom layer I have is the Barinas. Barinas. It is cheaply made, um, but it is cost effective. It's about the same price, $150, including tax, for six of them. So I was on a budget. Unfortunately, I ordered white ones, but they are off-white. They're like pinkish. Um, they are a little bit weaker than the than the sun blaster you can tell right there, but they do their job. How do I know they do their job? Because none of these plants have stretched. Yep, most of some most of some of these plants will stretch really easily if your lights are not powerful enough. So the burners perfectly fine as well, but cheaply made. That's the only thing, and they come in pinkish, which. But the pinkish part of it is actually not so bad because it's not irritating to the eyes as a real pink light would be. These are not irritating. So definitely I would recommend the Baroness or something similar if you are on a budget. Um, how long do I leave the lights on for? I leave the lights on now for about 11 hours. I'm probably gonna decrease it to 10 hours. Um, and I'll go through I'll go through the reason why afterwards I used to have them on for 16 hours 18 hours a day but once I discover the reason why I needed to reduce it I put it down to 11 hours and they're doing spectacular on 11 hours and none of the plants are stretching how do I know because none of these echeverias are stretching yeah so they they're on for 12 hours 11, most likely I'm switching down to 10 hours a day. Okay, so as you notice, every single layer has a piece of plastic on top. The reason for that is so that none of the dust and dirt will fall down, um, especially when you're watering, none of the um, water with dirt will fall down to the next layer, which makes everything ugly and you gotta you know, clean that up, right? You gotta clean that up, you don't wanna do that. So. That's why I have it there as well. Plus, it also doesn't touch the lights, which is important because the sun blaster lights are water resistant, but that doesn't mean you should like pour water on it, right? So I have them there. So the water, when I water, it would actually just hang out here. But because the the you have light underneath, um, heat does rise, so it does help to evaporate the water on the plastic and also from the bottom of the uh, your pots as well. So that way 
the water is not sitting there all week long it just starts evaporating really really quick um, and speaking of watering so a lot of you ask me will ask me how do I water and when do I water okay so this year because I need more exercise honestly I need to move a little bit more I'm getting fat you guys and I'm getting old and I need more exercise. I do go to the gym, but more exercise, more moving around is good for you, right? But not too much though. Don't uh, overexert yourself. Just just enough. So anyways, I've switched it over to uh, a watering. What are these called? Buckets? Teapots? Anyways, one of these. Um, watering buckets um, with a long stout. Oh, I actually know that word. Nice, good for you. A wa long watering stout and I just kind of pour Right, I pour, usually on plants like these, I can just pour on top, but plants like Echeverias, I try to water from the side, right there, because some of these plants are very sensitive to crown rot, so you don't want to water on top. Some of them are, you can just water from the top, and it's not, it's not a problem. Um, and I don't drown the water, don't drown the plant. When the water, when I water, when it just goes up here, I stop right away or I move on to the next plant because remember it'll saturate through so you don't have to like sit there until it saturates through it will saturate through to the bottom and it'll start leaking a little bit so that's how I water usually I used to use a hose but I'm that's 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 it I need more exercise so that's what I do and I just use tap water it's perfectly fine for me the pH level for our tap water is seven so it's neutral um, and I use a camera lens cleaner like here to clean up any of the water droplet that goes into like an echeveria like this because I don't want it to crown rot. Um, but that's that's how I water. And I usually water once every five days because on the fourth day it's almost dry and then the fifth day it's pretty much already dry. The soy medium is already dry. And the reason why I water it um, once every five days or once a week is that all your plants that are currently indoor, because I live in an apartment, I don't have the ability to um, set our own temperature. Our own temperature is already set for us. And usually it's very warm and it's super dry in here. So because it is controlled, temperature controlled to the optimal temperature for these plants, these plants, these plants, right? All of them. Um, and we have lights on for enough time. All of these plants are currently awake and growing. They're not just silly, sitting dilly dally, shilly shallying, you know? They're all growing and they're all sucking, uh, sucking up the water. They're all sucking up the water. So they're not actually sitting, doing nothing like, it is winter for us, yes, indeed, it's cold outside, but they're not dormant. They're all awake because it has the perfect temperature for them to grow, all the lights for them to photosynthesize, a lot of airflow. So I do not leave any of my plants on for like two weeks of not watering, three weeks or a month of not watering, right? I water quite a lot and they're doing spectacular spectacularly like spectacularly all of them are growing all the echeverias cacti euphorbias adromishkis haworthias aloes gasteria they're all growing at the same time because it is the most optimal temperature and optimal light so that's why i have it on for 11 hours a day for lights and i water five for every five days or once a week or whenever the soy medium is dry, which is like the fourth day, it gets dry already. <laughs> okay, so I guess that explains it, why I water quite a lot. Okay, but you know, if your home is more colder, like if your if your ambient temperature is like 15 degrees Celsius, then yes, all your summer growers are dormant, right? Gotta think, gotta think. But if your ambient temperature is always around 25 degrees Celsius with lights on or life off, lights off, that means your plants are growing and it's the most optimal time for them to grow right now, which means you shouldn't starve it to death. Um, 
and that's why I water a lot, and they're doing really great. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, so if you also notice, I use plastic pots. All of them are in plastic pots. I don't use any terracotta pots or unglazed pots. They're doing perfectly fine. I have them in um, trays, and I have holes in each trays. I should have used these ones because they're open. Um, I put holes in these trays so that airflow can go through them. So that way, you know, it helps to move the air like that. Uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah. On the side here, I have an oscillating fan. This is usually on the other side, but because my mom's vegetable domes are blocking the airway, so I have it over here. It is on the lowest setting possible, and it oscillates the whole entire day. So that way there's airflow for all of these plants to enjoy. And it's not just these plants. All plants require airflow. If there's stale air in the air, it's most likely going to die. This also helps to put to the, push the CO2 to them so that way they can photosynthesize. Yeah. Um, and I have another one on the other side too. So I have two. They're going on for all day long. Um, and I've had these for like a long time. So worth the money. I think they're $40 at Costco. Yeah. $40, the tower one. Um, I've had, I've, they've, they've been on for quite a long time, so doing great. Um, usually, it's, we have a window here, and usually the window is open um, because it's not actually cold outside. So whenever it's not freezing temperature or below freezing, we leave the window open so that way there's fresh air coming in and the uh, fan just blows the fresh air to the plants and also helps them to cool down during the nighttime as well. But if it's freezing temperature, we close it, of course, right? Of course we close it. Um, here, I use shower holders, like the shampoo bottle holders, you know, that's them. People don't believe me, but that's what I use. You can use any one of them, right? Um, and then they're not on suction cups. Do not get the one with a suction cup. Mine are on adhesive, extra strength adhesive. So that way you can put them on here very, very nicely. Um, and you can take the adhesive off by using the thing that you blow your hair with when it gets hot. What is that called? A blow dryer, yes. I should know this. I have two. A blow dryer, anyways. You can remove the adhesive with the blow dryer. Um, I think that's it. That's really it for um, how I set things up and why I water the way I water and how my plants are doing. So in the next video, we'll go through all the plants, all the beautiful plants that I have. And we'll go through the lighting system, my review of all the lighting system. Uh, and then, you know, I had, I had a whole list of things to do in the summer, but we'll, I guess we'll do them during the winter. She's got nothing else to do, right guys? All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoy all the plants so far. And hopefully you guys come back for the full video, which I'm not sure what we're going to do. All right. Anyways, thank you again, and I'll see you later. Love you. Bye.